Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Improving Battery Life with Restrictions. My name is Jing Yu. I'm a developer advocate from the Partner DevRel team. Hi, I'm Amit. I'm a software engineer on the Android Framework team. So today, we want to start with this notification that we've all received, hopefully never around this time of the day. Um, knowing that our battery is running out can be really frustrating and sometimes scary, depending on where we are and what we're doing at that time. These days, we rely so much on our devices for navigation, uh, talking to our friends and family, taking pictures, and even translate for us when we're traveling in a foreign country. But all these cool features and amazing apps that you built cannot help the user if their battery is dead. So that's why today we're talking about how we're going to improve battery with your help, hopefully. Um, and this is what we're going to cover. First, we'll talk about what's consuming power and how we measure power consumption. And then we're going to go through uh, power, the power saving features we introduced in recent years. And in the end, we're going to talk about how your app will be affected by these restrictions and what you can do to work with them. Next, I'll pass it over to Amit to talk about what's consuming power. Hi. Um, quickly walk through how we actually estimate how an app consumes power, how much power it's consuming on the device. Uh, these are the typical components, uh, hardware components that are consuming power uh, on a typical phone. Um, I've highlighted some of the top consumers. You got an earful about uh, display and how much power that consumes from Chris and Alan. Um, running the CPU at high frequencies is also pretty expensive. And uh, transferring data over the cell network is quite expensive as well. So. Um, when each device is manufactured, the OEM provides something called a power profile. What the power profile contains is the average current drawn by various subsystems that we want to measure in real time. Um, and uh, for example, you know, if, if you turn the screen on at minimum brightness, it might be about 100 milliamps. And if you crank it up to full brightness, depending on the technology, let's say it adds another 300 milliamps. So we keep track of uh, that in, in real time. Um, CPU at different frequencies has different power consumption. So we have that in the power profile as well. Um, at runtime, what we do is that there's a subsystem called battery stats. It tracks what each app is doing. Uh, it measures how long it's consuming each of these resources, like how much CPU time, at what frequency, how many data packets it's transferring, and so on. Uh, we take those values and then we multiply with the power cost for each of those in the power profile, and we get an approximate estimate of how much, how many milliamp hours the particular app has drained. And then we rank all the different apps based on their consumption presented to the user, uh, so they can see that in settings, and then they can learn for themselves what's really draining their battery. So let's talk about how the OS is trying to help the user extend their battery life. Uh, but first, broadly speaking, there are two reasons why an app runs. Right? Uh, the user is launching it. It's running in the foreground. Uh, user is actively using the app. Now, that's as developers, that's something you don't want them to not do. Uh, but that's a whole different topic about digital well-being and trying to you know, help users control how much time they spend on apps. Uh, but one note I want to leave about that here, because we're not going to talk too much about it, is uh, there is a concept about suspending apps. And that's something you might want to read about, and how that impacts your app if the user suspends the app for, say, the rest of the day. But we'll focus on how we try to limit background activity from an app. Um, an app can schedule background work by uh, you know, using jobs or alarms or, or setting up a, a background service. It can also register for callbacks for external triggers, such as a push message or uh, you walking past a geofence. So over the years, we've introduced several uh, features in the OS to save battery. First, in Marshmallow, we introduced Doze or Deep Doze. Uh, as the name suggests, it puts the device into a really deep sleep under the condition that the device is not moving. So let's say you left it on your desk or on your nightstand. You forgot to plug it in. Uh, it basically shuts down a lot of the background activity. 
so that you, you can really uh, extend your battery life. But this is not really how we use our daily phones, right? We are walking around with it, we're using it throughout the day. So we came up with Doze on the Go, or Light Doze. Uh, what that does is it puts the device into a slightly lighter sleep and wakes up more frequently so that it has an opportunity to see if there's any pending work to do so, so that your data is reasonably fresh. But it's not in front of you, you're not using the screen, so it can shut down some of the background work. You're probably all familiar with the Oreo restrictions on uh, background services, as well as limiting the number of implicit broadcasts that you can uh, wake up to. Um, and as of this month, everyone needs to target uh, Android Oreo or above, because otherwise you can't publish to the Play Store. But we'll focus more on what's new in P, uh, adaptive battery, app restrictions, or background restrictions. And we've also made some improvements to Battery Saver. Adaptive battery is actually an evolution of App Standby that was introduced back in Marshmallow along with Doze. What App Standby did was put apps into two, state, two possible states, active or inactive, based on usage. Um, adaptive battery extends this into four buckets now, where active is the least restrictive, and based on usage, we move it into some of the other buckets, and rare is the most restrictive. For instance, if you were at Google I.O. and you installed the I.O. app, by now, it should have gone to the rare bucket because you haven't been using it. So how does the OS assign these buckets to each app? Uh, it starts off when you're installing the app in a never bucket. It's not shown here. It's really not that relevant. Uh, but once you launch the app, or every time you launch the app, or any kind of strong interaction, like clicking on a notification from the app, the app goes into the active bucket. And it stays there for a while. And maybe in a few hours, it comes down to the working set where it starts applying restrictions on what you can do in the background. And then a little later, most to frequent, and then to rare, and then we uninstall your app. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> uh, and if there's some kind of an indirect interaction, such as you're looking at a notification by pulling down the shade, it's not a clear indication that it's an active usage of the app. So we put it in a slightly restricted state, which is the working set. Um, what is actually adaptive about this is if the device happens to have a machine learning algorithm, uh, what it does is it watches your usage patterns, learns over time, uh, and then it decides, OK, this app is probably going to be used in the next couple of hours. Let me put it in the active set. And maybe it can freshen up its data. Maybe it's, it needs to download the latest news or, or whatever. Um, and once it feels that maybe the app is not going to be used for a while, it might move it into one of the lower buckets. So this actually really improves our, our ability to reduce the amount of work that apps do in the background. And it's not your fault. It's just you don't know how the users, when the user is going to launch you. So we're trying to help with that. App restrictions is another feature, which is kind of an extreme version of background limits. Uh, we really limit uh, what the app can do in the background. So it's mostly meant for apps that you just want to be doing work in the foreground. Right? Uh, there are two ways uh, the app can go into the state. The user might see in settings that your app is draining battery and decides to manually restrict the app. The other way is the system is monitoring certain criteria about how the app is behaving. And if it feels that it's doing anything excessive uh, over certain thresholds that we set, it suggests to the user, hey, do you want to restrict this app because it is draining your battery in the background? Uh, these are things that we will improve over time, the kind of criteria and the thresholds. And OEMs are also free to add their own criteria. So what is restricted? If, if, uh, if an app is background restricted, uh, the usual jobs, alarms, foreground services. You can't run a foreground service if your app is in a restricted state. Because as far as the user is concerned, it is still kind of a background thing if you see something happening uh, in a, with a notification and it's doing work in the background. Um, FCM, as of January, uh, uh, will be restricted as well. So you won't get any mes messages when your app is in the restricted state. You also don't get location updates. And one thing that's unique about app restrictions is even while the device is charging, we don't let you run in the background. This is not true for any of the other restrictions. And the reason is this is not just about saving battery. It's also about annoyances and maybe privacy concerns. 
Battery saver was improved in Pi as well. Um, it's very similar to how app restrictions work, but it applies it across all the apps. Some of the differences are foreground services are OK to run while in Battery Saver, um, because you might want to be listening to music while on Battery Saver. Uh, there are no restrictions on push messages. Network is restricted, jobs and alarms, the usual ones. Um, and one thing that's new in Pi is we turn off location services completely, at least on Pixel devices. OEMs might not choose to do that. So we have some APIs that you can use to detect which state you are in, uh, which restricted state. For example, you can ask usage stats, what is your current standby bucket at this moment? But if you want to debug something or want to know how frequently you are in some rare bucket, you can also get historical information about your standby bucket changes. You can also check if you are background restricted right now, and you might, maybe you want to tell the user something about that, or for, maybe your critical services will not work. Um, but please don't nag the user. If they don't want you to run, they don't want you to run. Um, and you can also check if battery saver is on. Internally, it's called power saver mode. Hand it back to Jingyu. Thank you, Amit. So how is your app affected? So anytime to the system, um, your app will be in one of these two states. It will be either in the foreground or the background. And whenever your app is considered to be in foreground, all these restrictions are lifted, so you can run whenever you need to. But when your app is in background and the device is not charging, all of the battery saver uh, features uh, that Amit just talked about, any of them could be enabled, which means that your jobs, alarms, network access, and FCM messages could be restricted. And next, we have some really beautiful diagrams which will uh, show you how they are affected. First, let's look at the scheduled jobs. Given that all the constraints you have on the job is satisfied, these are the features which will affect when this job will get run. First, let's look at the device level. If the device is in DOS, then your job will be deferred to maintenance window. And then if user decide to turn on battery saver, or app restrictions, meaning restrict your app from that battery setting, your job will be deferred until your user opens the app or when the app is in foreground. And if none of those are true, then it's up to app standby bucket or adaptive battery in Pixel. Your job could be deferred up to 24 hours. Um, that's when your app belongs to the rare bucket, and that's the worst case, um, which means that even in the worst case, your job will still get run every day. So similarly for alarm manager alarms, these features will affect when your alarms fire. Um, when devices in DOS, your alarm will be deferred to maintenance window. And if the user turn on battery saver or they restrict your app, your alarm will be deferred when, until your app is in foreground. And uh, finally, uh, to the app standby bucket, your, uh, your alarm could be delayed uh, until up to two hours if your app belongs to that rare bucket. So if your use case really requires that exact time execution, then, uh, for example, like if you want to remind the user uh, they need to take medicine or a TV program that they subscribe to is about to start. So for these use cases, you can use this uh, sitewell uh, idle method that we provided, so your alarm will fire on time. But whenever you, when, you're, you're, when you are using Alarm Manager to wake up the device frequently, and imagine that if every app is doing that at a different time, then you are draining a lot of battery. That's why we have the excessive wake up on your Android Vitals page. So if you see your uh, excessive wake up on Vitals page is caused by Alarm Manager, um, I would highly recommend that you think about maybe it's time for you to migrate to some other APIs, like Job Scheduler. If you're sending push notifications, um, you are probably already using Firebase Cloud Messaging. And similarly, your FCM messages will also be affected. When the device is in DOE, your normal priority messages will be deferred to the maintenance window, which means that if you're sending high priority message, that message will be delivered immediately. 
This is because high-priority FCM message, they are created to uh, trigger action that's visible to the user, like sending a notification so user can act on it. And if the user turn on battery saver, then uh, still your uh, messages will be delivered uh, as it is. As Amis mentioned earlier, if the user restricted your app, um, currently, the messages are still delivered, but as of January uh, next year, 2019, all these messages will be discarded because this is a strong signal from the user that they want to restrict the app. And finally, in the app standby bucket, there's a different cap um, on each bucket that your app could belong to. The more active the bucket is, the more high-party message you can send. But if you reach that quota, don't worry, we're not discarding your message. Uh, we're just downgrading them to normal priority, which means that they could be delayed a little bit when devices in those. So if you really want to reach your user with that important message, don't use high priority for operations that don't require user interaction. Whenever you're sending high priority, it should trigger a notification or something user can interact with. OK, here's a summary of the power saving features that we talked today. One thing to note is that all of these features we see here, they will apply on any app that's running on Android 9 device, no matter which target SDK you are targeting. So our first advice to you is please test your app against all of these features. We have ADB command on the developer doc um, you can use to put your app in all of these features and test your use cases to see if your push notifications are coming through, if your job is running, are you handling that case well? The good news is, except for the high priority FCM message restriction that I just mentioned, all actually none of the other restrictions is new. We had them since DOS. So if your app works well under DOS, there is very, it's very likely that you don't need to change much to work with these features. Our second advice to you is whenever you're running tasks in the background, please keep in mind uh, to use this lazy first design principle. Try to reduce the work you're running in the background. Think about, do I really need to run in the background? Can this wait till my app is in foreground? And think about, do I need to run with this frequency? Maybe reduce some work I'm doing in the background. And if you really need to run in the background, try to defer that work to a later time, say when device is plugged in, or think about that exact alarm. Does it have to happen at that exact time? Can it wait? And finally, try to coalesce the work you do in the background. So in Lollipop, we introduced Job Scheduler, which is a way for you to help the system to intelligently batch all the background work. And this year, we introduced Work Manager in Jetpack, which makes running background work easier. And since uh, when it hits stable, it will be the recommended way to do background work. So with that in mind, Let's look at this upgraded view of how you do things uh, in the background. If you are running a work, uh, if you need to execute a work or do a sync that's deferrable locally, then Work Manager is your answer. If this work is triggered online, then you would use a FCM message with Work Manager meaning you would want to use FCM message to notify your app that there's some work you need to do or you need to sync with the app server, and then in the message handler, you enqueue that work. If your user case doesn't um, work fit with either of these cases and you need to run something at that exact time, then you would want to use Alarm Manager. Finally, if this is something that the user started, user is aware that it's running, and it must happen immediately right now, then you would use foreground service. But please, whenever you're using this foreground service, add that action in the notification, because there's nothing more frustrating than seeing a bunch of notifications, but there's nothing I can do about them. Because foreground service notification, you cannot dismiss them. So please add that action in the notification for user to stop their service, and then notification is dismissed. And if you reach the end, um, I would say go back to the top, or you should wait until your app is in foreground. 
So we have a work manager talk later today at 1 p.m. Um, please go to that to learn how you can use work manager to do uh, background work. And we also have uh, a lot of best practices um, and guidance on how you can help us to help users save battery in this Power Block series. Um, please visit to learn more. Um, and we will be in the uh, office hour this afternoon for any questions. Thank you.